Hey everybody, it's Rich at RM Auto Diag and today we're going to have a look at a Golf with a, uh, a battery drain and we're going to go through how to test and find out what's wrong with it. Okay, so quickly just before I start, um, uh, I'd like to say thanks to any of my new subscribers. If you're not a subscriber then hit the subscribe button below and hit the bell for the notifications. Right, okay, so getting into this, uh, we've got a Volkswagen Golf, it's a 2006 I believe and it's the Mark 5 and what we've got going on here is customers saying they leave it for a week and the battery's gone flat um, they've had a look around they can't see that there's any lights on inside or anything like that uh, they haven't noticed anything obvious um, so we're just going to go through a few tests to see if we can find a draw on it and see if we can um, get rid of it or at least tell them how to get rid of it so uh, let's get under the bonnet and see where we go. Okay, so we're under the bonnet and what we've got set up is we've got a battery tester on the battery. The battery's been fully charged so we can um, make a good test from it. So uh, we'll just test the battery and see what capacity is at. And it's good, so we're not expecting any problems from the battery. So we'll move on to get the, uh, the drain stuff set up. Okay, so we've got a multimeter and we've got it set up on the amp setting. And this... Um, this will take up the 10 amps. What you're gonna to have to do is move your leads over into the, the 10 amp section here with the red one, leave the black in the common ground as it is. Uh, what we're gonna do is disconnect the negative lead and then get one end of the lead onto the negative post and the other end on here and now it's in series. And as you can see, it is giving an amp reading. So what we're going to do is we're going to lock up the car and we'll watch that drop down and we'll see how low it gets and then we'll be back. Right, okay, so we've settled down pretty well. We've left it for 10, 15 minutes and we're sort of hanging around this 120 milliamp sort of scale. Maybe a little bit more there sometimes. So uh, we've got a bit of a draw. I mean, ideally you'd be under 50 milliamps it would be a maximum on uh, on most cars and um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start going through some fuses and see if we can narrow down the circuit so uh, I'm going to start with the interior fuses and uh, we'll be back in a sec right okay so we're set up here on the um, interior fuse box and you've got two options you can either watch your, your meter and pull the fuses out and see when the, the amperage draw stops and disappears or the other option is you can do a volt drop test across the fuse um, which is what I prefer let's say you can do this right from the start if you want so got the meter set up and we're on the 200 millivolt scale and what we can do is we can start going through some fuses I've actually found the fuse that I've got an issue with but if we just touch either side of the fuse see you can see we've got nothing on that one if I come up to this one here this 5 amp one fuse number 35 you can see we've got about a volt and a half of voltage drop across that fuse now this is the only fuse in the car that's got that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this fuse out And then we're going to go back over to the meter and we should see that the amperage has dropped. Okay, so back around the front and we've got the fuse disconnected and as you can see the amperage draw has dropped right down to what's that, 6 or 7 milliamps. So we're happy with that. So if I go and put the fuse back in. Hopefully I won't set the alarm off. And we go back around the front. And as you can see it's gone straight back up to that 120. So we can look on this circuit which is for the alarm and we can find out what it's attached to and hopefully we can see where the strain's coming from. Okay, so we had a look on a wiring diagram to find what this uh, Fuse 35 was powering with the alarm. 
and what it powers is interior sensors it also does a tilt sensor and it also does the alarm siren um, now just looking at plenty of alarm faults before I would be going for the alarm siren first so I'm going to take that out um, we're going to leave the fuse in and I'm going to disconnect the uh, alarm siren and see if we lose our, volt, uh, our amperage draw okay so we're in the driver's side wheel arch and the siren is bolted up here just behind a little security panel with some rivets what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the plug and we're going to disconnect it hopefully one handed right so we've got the plug disconnected and if we look at our meter we're down at that tiny amperage draw again if I leave it on there and I'll go connect it back up and we'll see if it jumps back up and that's it connected again and it's jumped back up so we're fairly happy that we've got an issue with the alarm siren uh, an interesting thing to note is that it um, makes the indicators go off but it doesn't actually sound the siren so um, potentially this was going off in the, in the middle of the night and just no one noticed um, so this is going to need a new alarm siren so hopefully you found this uh, pretty informative uh, thanks for thanks for watching